Hi, I'm Ling from LingAbsum.com. Today I'm going to share with you 10 lessons I've learned being a manager. So I'm going to refer to my notes here. So number one, the fastest way to get better at something is to find a coach or a mentor. So when I first transitioned to a manager, I really struggled for the past, for the first three months or so. I didn't really know what to do. I, at the time, I didn't have uh, great managers as role models for me. So I only knew what I would not want to do, but I wasn't sure how to model myself um, with somebody that I really admire. So when I finally found, found a mentor for myself, found a coach, my, my growth as a manager like, just went exponential. I was a so much better person for it. I was, I was really able to serve my team when I was able to do that. Number two, so everyone is unique. So I would say your management style should be unique and cater to the uniqueness of your team. So some people would need more challenging, like they want you to challenge them. They want you to set deadlines for them, um, goals to stretch goals. Some of them will want you to be a little bit more gentle with them, to be more supportive, to be more of a listening ear for them. So you really, part of being a manager is really knowing who you're dealing with what really motivates motivates them, what drives them, what goals they want. And as a manager, I'm really being a chameleon here, uh, trying to be different uh, manager to different people. Number three, it's about the team and the people and it's not about you. So being a great manager is figuring out how to empower individuals, which then empowers the team. So it's never about you. It's never about what you're getting as a manager. It's never about taking credit for yourself as a manager. It's about the team. So you need to know that is one of the important things a great manager would do. Number four, uh, be quick about positive feedback. And when it comes to negative feedback, take a bit more time to gather information. So for example, if I hear somebody is doing great, if I, I notice it myself, oh my God, that was a great presentation, I will immediately DM via Slack someone or even tell that person uh, in person, hey, that was a great job. I really enjoyed your presentation. I thought the, the, the point you made about this was very impactful. Like positive feedback, I'm pretty quick. Uh, because I really want to leverage positive reinforcement to make sure that they understand, oh, wow, that was great, so I should do more of that. Uh, on the flip side, for negative feedback, I do take the time to gather more information depending on the severity of the negative feedback. If it's something I observe firsthand, then obviously I'm able to give that feedback to that person because I observe it firsthand and I'm able to say, hey, by the way, I was at the meeting, I observed uh, you did this and I found that the impact of that is X. You know, talk it through with, with your employee. If it's something that I did not observe myself but was told by a third party, what I might do is first I'll do a, a feedback, I'll get feedback from other people just to kind of go, hey, did you observe anything out of the blue? Is there something that you see? Um, I would try and uh, get more information because sometimes that feedback, negative feedback from a third person could be very biased. So before I bring that negative feedback to my employee, I need to make sure that it is objective and it is factual as much as possible. Uh, number five, uh, you have to build a team's trust in you and that takes time. So I love the trust equation you can search um, trust equation. I think there's a really good medium post on it. So trust is a formula. Hey, hey. Uh, it's credibility plus reliability plus authenticity. The whole thing divided by self-interest. What this means is we trust people. This, this is not just a manager. This is anyone entering to a new team, entering to a new organization. We tend to trust uh, people when they've given time uh, to follow through on things, that means being reliable. Credibility, they came with an experience, they, they have a resume that they've shown that they've done certain things before. Uh, authenticity, this person is real, this person is, whatever you get from this person in private is the same person as you get in public. And divided by self-interest, you, you would trust somebody who doesn't put 
his or her self-interest first. So as a manager, this is really important to build trust in your team. You want your team to know that you are rooting for them, that you will follow through with things that you've promised them. Number six, so reframe what it means to be productive. I find when I first transitioned from a, an individual contributor to a manager, the hard thing was really trying to figure out, did I do a good job? It's hard to tell. Was I productive? Being an individual contributor, you know, you're checking things off, you're committing code, you've deployed things. It's like, oh yeah, I've completed this feature, go on to the next. Whereas being a manager, sometimes it's having one-on-one that sometimes it is giving feedback and those things are never done. So reframe what it means for yourself um, being productive is as a manager. Number seven, you won't have the answers to everything and that's okay. So it's when I first became a manager, I have the thought, well, I've not been promoted to a manager. I need to know the answers to everything. And so I feel guilty if I don't. I, I'm constantly trying to be the best at everything. And as a manager, you don't have to be, and that is okay. You need to know and be resourceful to figure out how to find those answers for the team and talk to the team as, as a whole, as a team, we are able to find solutions that's right for the team. Number eight, which really ties well to, the, to number seven is, it is okay to admit to your team that you don't have the answers. So it's okay to admit that you don't know anything. It's okay to be vulnerable and say, you know what, that is not in my domain of expertise, um, but I can figure out, I can talk to you know another department, I can figure out training for the team. So the worst thing you can do is to pretend that you know it all and pretend uh, that you have to be the person to have all the answers and lead the team to a place where they should not be. So it's better if you kind of go, I don't know, but I'm gonna figure it out with the team to get to a place where we'll be better off because we're trying things, because we're trying to make decisions. That's the next best decision for the team, given the information that you have. Number nine, so there is no us versus them. So your first team is not the team you manage. So this is from the book by Patrick Lencioni, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Um, the first team, your first team is, is you plus your peer manager, uh, your peer managers. Um, they are your first team together with your manager. It could be a director or VP. They are your first team. You have to figure out what is the best interest for the company, the best interest for your department. So the team you lead, the team you manage is not your first team. So sometimes you may be, you may have to ask the team to do certain things that, or make decisions that may not be the most ideal for your team. And that is okay because you, what you need to do is to let them understand there's a long game we're playing here. The reason why we're doing this temporary is because of X. So we have to understand your first team is not the team you manage, but your peer managers and your manager. So number 10, to be a great manager, you should learn some basic coaching techniques. So Project Oxygen done by Google lists coaching as one of the top 10 attributes of a great manager. And being a manager, being a manager of managers and being a coach myself, I can attest that now that I have years um, of experience being a coach and being trained as a coach, I found that to be an immense help um, to me being a great manager. So there's a book called The Coaching Habit it will give you a great primer in terms of how to think like a coach, how to ask questions like a coach. And as a bonus, there's 11. Uh, the last one is when you first transition to manager, you will feel like an imposter. I felt like an imposter probably for about the first six months. Like, why, why am I in this role? Perhaps they've made a mistake because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so you will feel all those feelings and it's okay. So what I would recommend is understand how you manifest some of these imposter syndrome into things that could be negative. Um, so for myself, when I go through imposter syndrome, um, I, what I, how I manifest it as is I have to be good at everything. I have to be excellent at, at everything and know everything in my role. 
So I know that it's a blind spot. So sometimes I'll check in with myself um, to kind of go, you know, like try to recalibrate. Another thing I do is try to seek help, seek support, let people know, let your manager know, hey, I, I'm feeling quite, I know I'm in the midst of an, being in, in, like an imposter uh, because I'm learning new things, I'm recalibrating, uh, be patient with me, I may need additional support. Look for a coach to help you with that, look for a mentor to help you with that. So that's it, 11 things I've learned uh, as a manager. I hope this is helpful. Share this with someone who needs to hear this today and uh, reply, comment, email me if you have any questions or need clarification. Reach me at linkepson.com. Thank you. Bye now.